Good evening, parents, grandparents, friends, families, teachers, and welcome to the Centennial Secondary 2020 Commencement Ceremony. My name is Brian Jackson, and I'm one of the Vice Principals at Centennial. It's my pleasure to be your Master of Ceremonies this evening. I would like to begin by acknowledging that School District 43 exists on the core and unceded territory of the Coquitlam First Nation, and within the shared traditional territories of the Tsleil-Waututh, Keitsi, Musqueam, Squamish, and Stolo Nations. As we gather today and look ahead at your future in Coquitlam or beyond, I would like to invite our graduates, guests, and your families to consider what responsibilities might come along with such an acknowledgement. We are fortunate to live in a beautiful and prosperous part of the world, and would each of us do well to consider what, how we might live up to all that this land and its original inhabitants have given us. Today's ceremony is a marking of a time in the life of your graduate. As parents and guests, you may have memories of your graduate as they were just entering kindergarten. The past 13 years have gone by, and you may ask yourself, where did the time go? We want you to enjoy this commencement ceremony and all that it represents to you and your graduate. Today, our national anthem will be performed by two of our graduates, Mina McKenzie and Vanessa Peretti. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true. Please be seated everyone and thank you to Mina and Vanessa. Our honorary guests will deliver a message for the class of 2020. At this time I would like to welcome His Worship Mayor Richard Stewart who brings greetings from the city of Coquitlam. Hello my name is Richard Stewart I'm the mayor of Coquitlam. I'm standing in front of Centennial High School it's quite empty looking of course it's been empty for a couple of months as we've all had to deal with the pandemic. We know that this year's grad will be different than it's been in any year in our history. And I first of all want to begin by congratulating the graduates of 2020. You have much to celebrate. Your years of achievement here in School District 43 will put you on a great footing for a bright future. But that celebration is going to be different from the celebration I had when I graduated and every other celebration since. I commit to you that we will find a way to work with you and to congratulate you personally and to give you our best wishes personally. We wish you, all of you, the graduates of 2020 from Centennial High School, the very best. Much success as you pursue your futures. We wish you and your family safety and health over this coming summer. On behalf of our community, congratulations. Thank you, Mayor Stewart. I would now like to welcome school trustee Barb Hobson to deliver greetings on behalf of our Board of Education. Hello, my name is Barb Hobson and I'm the liaison trustee from the Board of Education to Centennial Secondary. And no, this won't be a long speech. First and most importantly, I want to tell you that the Board of Education is incredibly proud of each and every one of you. You are coming through a very difficult time in the history of the world, and yet you stuck with your studies to graduate. I know you're disappointed about missing the final months of school. Many of you had planned to travel during spring break, either to Europe on the school trip or to other places with family and friends. You've missed year-end concerts, sporting events, dances, and most of all, graduation and the grad dinner dance. You miss seeing your friends on a daily basis, visiting at lunchtime, and working together on projects. It's been a confusing and unsettling time for you as you stayed home to quarantine 
and worked in isolation to complete your studies remotely. I will truly miss seeing all of you at the Orpheum. The excitement of the day, the love and the happiness in your parents' eyes as they watch you cross the stage. The pride I see as your teachers and administrators are able to congratulate each of you individually. Here's what I know about you. You've learned that you, your friends, your family, and the rest of the world will get through this. You've learned that you're resilient, and you've learned that new, of new ways to work and study and stay connected. And for the rest of your life, you'll be able to say, 2020, that was my grad year. My advice to you is short. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, but learn from them. Trust your gut. Keep your family close, even when you're far away. Make the world a better place. As you leave Centennial to continue your life journey, I wish you success, happiness, fulfillment, and the best that life has to offer. Take care. Stay safe. Be the person you dream of becoming. Thank you. At this time, we are honored to have our superintendent, Ms. Patricia Gartland, address our graduating class of 2020. Please join me in welcoming our superintendent of schools, Ms. Patricia Gartland, who brings greetings from our school board office. We are here to celebrate the end of one journey and the beginning of another for the graduating class of 2020. As we say farewell to you remarkable students, as you embark on excite, an exciting new chapter of your lives, I encourage you to reflect on how you have left your indelible marks on your school community and culture. As graduates, you are not simply leaving with a certificate. Achieving this milestone means you've experienced academic, social, and personal growth and enjoyed many successes along the way. You've excelled in academics, triumphed in athletics, shone in the arts, created award-winning innovations and projects, raised awareness about important issues, made a difference, overcome challenges, and established lasting friendships. You should all be very proud of what you have accomplished. It is important to recognize the important role that your parents, family members, teachers, administrators, staff, and fellow students have played in helping you reach graduation. Express to them your gratitude for their support and involvement over the years. You have the memorable distinction of being the first class to graduate as part of a virtual ceremony during a global pandemic. You have the honor of leading all those who will come after you. You are the generation who will determine how we will go forward to build a better future for the 21st century. Everything you have learned and experienced to date has helped prepare you for the opportunities and challenges that lie ahead. Wherever your next step in life takes you, be it attending post-secondary school, starting a job, or traveling, be confident knowing that you have the ability, the skills, and the education to succeed. Now is the time for you to follow your passion. As you move into this exciting new stage of your lives, enjoy what lies ahead and strive to reach your goals. If you believe in yourself, put forth effort, and never give up, you can achieve anything. When a time comes in your life that you feel something is holding you back from exploring and achieving your dreams and goals, reflect on this quote from the late Steve Jobs, founder of Apple, who said, your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most importantly, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. On this momentous occasion, I encourage all of you to listen to your inner voice and follow your heart and intuition. Congratulations to each and every one of you, graduation class of 2020. Be bold, be confident, and be proud. Best wishes to all of you for your continued journey. Thank you.
This year, we have asked a couple of past centaurs to share some thoughts with you. Hi guys, Dante Favreau here. Uh, I'd just like to reach out to the Centennial grad students of 2020 on their graduation and, and commencements. Uh, I know you guys can't spend it with one another right now, but uh, you guys should be extremely proud of the success you had at Centennial and um, keep striving to be great. And to all the athletes, um, I know it's frustrating times, but uh, just keep working to be the best version of yourself and uh, just stay safe, guys. And again, uh, congrats. Hi, my name's Rowan. I'm a Centennial alumni. I graduated in 2014 and I just wanted to say a huge congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. This is an insane time to be starting the next chapter of your lives, but just because the celebrations can't be the same, it doesn't take away from your achievements at all. Your community is so proud of you. You should be so proud of yourselves. High school is hard academically and socially. And I just wanted to give a few pieces of advice that I may have wanted to hear when I was graduating from high school. Um, my time at Centennial was awesome for me. I was really involved in the music department, the musical theater department, and I was also really passionate about a lot of my academic courses, particularly in the humanities. So when I was graduating, I was having a really difficult time deciding what I wanted to do. I was very torn between my interests that were in very different spheres and would involve very different educational paths. I did end up choosing academics over performing arts. I attended Simon Fraser University for their criminology program, largely because of Ms. Chambers' phenomenal law class. Um, and university took up so much of my time and brain power that I really didn't see myself being able to do any music ever again, which was really hard for me to accept until I was approached by a friend who was also a Centennial graduate who was in a band at the time and they were looking for another member. And I was really unsure and really nervous because it was so outside of my life plan I'd made for myself. But I decided to just go for it and smash cut to a couple weeks later I was suddenly in a really fun alt folk rock band and had the opportunity to perform all over Vancouver um, at various venues and festivals, did some recording and touring and if I had asked my high school self what I thought my undergraduate experience was going to look like, that was not it at all. So it was pretty crazy and although university took me a little longer than I'd anticipated, I did graduate from SFU with a major in criminology, a minor in sociology, and a certificate in legal studies. And I am continuing my academic journey. I am currently studying and planning to apply for law schools, but music remains a huge part of my life. I'm in a super fun folk band that plays at some of the local breweries and I continue to do lots of different projects and recordings with a phenomenal, amazing group of Vancouver musicians. So the takeaway is that even if your interests are in completely different places, you don't necessarily have to ditch one of your passions for another. You definitely have the opportunity to try different things. I'm not saying it's easy and I lost a lot of sleep and studied in the back of bars sometimes, but I wouldn't change it for anything. I would highly encourage you not to turn down opportunities just because you're scared or because they're outside of your original plan. It's completely okay to change your mind multiple times and to change your path multiple times. You have no obligation to stick to something just because it's what you set out planning to do. And you never know what interests or passions you might be missing out on because you were too scared to join that random club or take that random class. Um, every different experience you do is going to teach you new things about yourself and new things about the world. So I really feel like you can't lose. Um, for those of you that are choosing an academic path through university or college, I would encourage you to dive headfirst, take a chance on a course that's outside of your major. It can completely change your way of thinking about the world. University taught me so much. It taught me to think critically. It taught me that every situation is nuanced. It taught me that reading isn't just about obtaining the surface level information, but also looking at how they gathered their evidence, how they did their research, what evidence they decided to omit. Um, that just because someone who is important or famous or powerful or has a fancy title tells you that you have to believe something to be true, it doesn't mean that it's objectively true and you have the power to question everything you hear and read. That is simultaneously the most terrifying and the most empowering feeling in the world. And even if academics isn't your thing, knowledge from different point of, 
of you has never been more accessible and I highly encourage every one of you to listen to multiple and diverse voices, to stay informed, to think critically and to take action and make change in the world that you want to see because I really feel like young people are starting to be listened to more than ever. So once again, congratulations. I'm so excited for you guys. Good luck in all of your future endeavors and congratulations again. We will now invite Veronica Farnell to present our Doyle Award. I am very pleased to present the Doyle Award to the top athlete for the 2019-2020 year. The Doyle brothers initiated the Doyle Award in 1959 to stimulate greater participation and excellence of achievement by student athletes at what was then Como Lake High School. From 1959 until 1966, the award went to a graduating student from Como Lake. In 1967, our school district reorganized and the students and staff made the historic trek a few blocks east to formally open Centennial School. Dan Doyle was the first football coach at Centennial and was an active organizer of provincial football well into his 80s. Since 1967, the Doyle Award has been presented to deserving student athletes at Centennial School who, according to their coaches, best personified the criteria originally laid out by the Doyle brothers. The recipients of the prestigious award have excelled in at least one major sport at Centennial during their graduating year. Secondly, they have demonstrated a high standard of morals both on and off the field of play and in their regular school activities. Thirdly, they have demonstrated to their coaches the desire to learn and help others. And finally, they have been academically cooperative students. This year's candidate certainly meets these criteria. During his four years at the school, the student's name has become synonymous with excellence athletically and academically. I would now like to introduce our Doyle Award winner for this year, Dominic Perlin. His skills and work ethic are commendable. He has become the most dominant basketball player in British Columbia for his age level. He was selected as one of the top 25 players in the nation and was selected to the prestigious BioSteel All-Canadian Game. With all of his hard work, development, and excellent academic record, he has earned an NCAA Division I full ride scholarship to Lehigh University of the Patriot League in Pennsylvania. Please join me in congratulating our 2020 recipient of the Doyle Award, Dominic Perlin. Congratulations, Dom. Mr. Cam McKenzie was the first principal of Centennial School. He was a man ahead of his time in terms of secondary school education. He had a vision for Centennial, one which included values of academic excellence, service to the community, and citizenship. It is now my pleasure to present the Cam McKenzie Award. Each year, Centennial recognizes the graduate who best exemplifies these qualities. We are pleased to announce that Brianna Sadu has been selected as the recipient of the Cam McKenzie Award for the year 2020. Brianna is a dedicated student who has a long history of service at Centennial. She has been actively involved in the Me to We, fundraising through a wide variety of initiatives, such as selling those tasty Krispy Kreme donuts or candy grams, encouraging awareness of her peers to the plight of those less fortunate. Her fundraising was heartfelt as she sought to make things better for children in impoverished situations. Brianna has consistently demonstrated that she is a caring and very responsible individual and has a genuine desire to help others. Throughout her four years at Centennial, Brianna has demonstrated she wanted to make a difference to others. Her engagement with students and staff has been thoughtful and sincere, modest, and always thinking of how to make things better for others. We congratulate Brianna on her many accomplishments and are pleased to present her with the Cam McKenzie Top Citizenship Award and Scholarship. Congratulations, Brianna. And now, Mr. Ben King will present the Eric Hamber Scholarship Award. It is my pleasure to not only present the prestigious Hamber Scholarship, but the Governor General Medal as well. Both of these prestigious scholarships will be presented to the same student. The Eric Hamber Scholarship was created by Aldean Hamber, who established the Hamber Foundation in 1964 in memory of her husband, the Honorable Eric Hamber. Eric Hamber was the Lieutenant Governor of British Columbia from 1937 to 1941. The scholarship ensures that Eric Hamber's interest in the enrichment of the lives of people in BC continues. The Governor General Medal is awarded to Centennial's top academic student for the 2019-2020 school year. This medal was first awarded in Canada in 1873, and is one of the most prestigious awards that a Canadian student can receive. The three levels of the award are designated by the medals of bronze at the secondary level, silver at the undergraduate level, and gold at the graduate level. This medal is presented on the behalf of Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Julie Payette, Governor General of Canada. It is my absolute pleasure to present these two prestigious awards to the very deserving student, Kayla Fong. 
Kayla Fong has had an impressive four years at Centennial. Her marks as of today are 97% in AP Calculus, 100% in AP Psychology, 97% in Calculus, 99% in English 12, 98% in Concert Band, 98% in Jazz Band, 97% in Pit Band, 95% in Physics 12, and 96% in World History 12. She has maintained this high level of academic excellence while leading the school's Wish Youth Network charity, being one of three air cadets to be promoted to the rank of flight sergeant, working as a swim instructor and a lifeguard for Coquitlam, and consistently being a positive member of our centennial community. Please join us in congratulating Kayla and wishing her the best in the future. As is the tradition at our graduation ceremonies, several talented graduates have dedicated a musical piece to their classmates. At this time, we will hear a tribute entitled, Here's to Us. Please welcome Vanessa Peretti, Cohen Mars, Connor Sito, and Mina McKenzie to our screens. We could just go home right now Or maybe we could stick around For just one more drink, oh yeah Grab another bottle out Let's shoot the breeze, sit back down For just one more drink, oh yeah So here's to us Principal of Centennial, Mr. Anthony Chofido, to address our graduates and guests. For more than 50 years, Centennial has congratulated its graduates with the traditional ceremony, speeches, and rites of passage to commemorate the end of one journey and the beginning of another. There is a comforting familiarity that comes with the traditions associated with graduation. And perhaps this is the reason why this year's graduation feels so strange. Part of us wanted to ignore the pandemic and all the ways it has disrupted our lives. We wanted your commencement to be about so much more than COVID-19 and the ways it has impacted this year. 
We wanted you to have the typical graduation that everyone before you experienced. And to be honest, we didn't want you to be known as the graduating class of COVID-19. However, as we deliver this speech to you from behind a screen, it is apparent to us that trying to separate your grade 12 experiences from the pandemic is almost impossible. So as your grade 12 year comes to a close and you recognize the uncertainty that lies ahead, you may have very mixed emotions about moving on. And while this may be frightening for some, each unique moment provides us with new opportunities. Historical moments like this one do not come along often. These are moments that will be written about and will echo throughout the next century. One day your children and their children will be reading about the pandemic of 2020. They will talk about the number of people who lost their lives, their jobs, their freedom. They will talk of the impact on our civilization, our institutions, and our traditions. And they will talk of the impact of those who had to alter or were unable to celebrate milestones or significant events in their lives. Events like this year's graduation. It will focus on everything that has been lost, and history books may take a similarly bleak look at this time when everything that once seemed stable seems in flux. But there is something more profound happening right now that has created an entirely unique point of reflection for you as graduates. The pandemic has forced us to reconsider what matters to us, such as the value of toilet paper, canned beans, and eggs. But it has also been a moment to reimagine our society's heroes, a moment when sports stars and celebrities have taken a back seat to doctors, nurses, grocers, and gas station attendants. We have an opportunity to recreate our visions of wealth, life purposes, social interactions, transportation, travel, hygiene, and employment from now into the future. These last few months have shown us the power of community and courage. We've witnessed story after story of people helping others through acts of human kindness, and we're reminded that the desire to feel good, safe, and connected are inherent in our happiness. We recognize that simplicity should be embraced and that at the core of our happiness is not the possessions we hold, but the opportunities to freely leave our homes, hug a loved one or a friend, and be healthy. And so as we look ahead, there is incredible opportunity for you to reimagine your future, one that makes you happy, one that creates happiness for others, and one that aligns your values with your sense of purpose. It's a world that each of you will have a hand in putting back together the best way that you can think to, in ways that are big and small, and extending the first hug to a friend who's been outside of your bubble, or holding a new baby cousin, niece, or nephew. Some of you will continue on with your schooling. Others will go to work. And some of you will do some exploring as you search for the things that bring meaning and purpose. And this is what is so cool about being human. This is not just about a way of being, but it is a way of becoming. So we want to ask that you not get drawn into the sense that we are living through dark times, though we may have seen brighter days. We want you to encourage you to get uncomfortable with yourself. To give yourself permission to grow. To love, to be loved. To care and to protect one another and this planet. And to remember that one person in one moment can change course and steer us in a better direction. We want you, and we need you, to be that person. Centeno grads, it is time for your next journey. Be true to yourself, be proud of your actions, and be grateful for who you love and who loves you. We're proud and grateful to have had you in our lives these last four years. Congratulations, Centaur grads. Thank you, Mr. Chafito. And now, the moment we've been waiting for, the presentation of the class of 2020.
congratulating the Centennial graduating class of 2020. This is the time when we welcome this year's valedictorian. We know him as a strong leader on the court and in the classroom. He is rarely seen without a smile on his face and a kind word to say to staff and students alike. It is our absolute pleasure to welcome to the stage Centennial's 2020 class valedictorian, Leif Skelding. What a year we're having. 2020 has been a roller coaster of emotions and it's been a ride that I wouldn't change for anything. Let's not be saddened by what we've lost in this process, but let's rejoice for our adult lives are just around the corner. We're the quarantine class. We're Centennial's class of 2020. Let me talk to you about response. How do we as people respond? I'm gonna share a quick story about that. It was a dark starry night four years ago. My family and I were huddled around a campfire, sharing stories, laughing, roasting marshmallows. An ordinary camping trip. Then it grew dark. We didn't think much of it. We decided to go to sleep. But in the middle of the night, a large noise was nearby. It woke me up. I sat up. Suddenly, the campfire that was still bright cast a shadow onto our tent. A monstrous, huge, hairy figure in the shape of a man right beside our tent. I immediately thought, it's over. He's here. Bigfoot. He's right beside our tent, and as he walks around, he begins to unzip, and he enters. It was my dad. What a relief. So how did I respond to my dad? I think it's safe to say, not very well. But my response is the same as our senior year. At the beginning, we're all smiling, laughing, loving life. And then the night came. We don't think much of it, but it all hits us at the same time. Bigfoot. He's ruined our senior year. We're all cowering in our tents wondering, what happens next? Why did he have to come here? Sorry, Bigfoot. He's COVID-19. So now that our bubble's been compromised, and no, I don't mean our social distancing bubble. I mean our childhood, our young adult lives. That bubble, it's been burst, burst open, unfairly and abruptly. We've been cast into the adult world. So what do we ask? Why us? I think what we should be asking is, why not us? I mean, really think about it. We have a lot to grieve about, but grieving, more often than not, later defines who you are as a human being. Those moments, they're precious. They bring about true and real emotion. It's a constant reminder that every day, we all experience disappointment, confusion, anger, frustration. It's validation of our own humanity. As much as this pandemic has made us all realize what's going wrong in our lives, it's highlighted everything that's truly important to each and every one of us. It's taught every one of us an, an individual, unique lesson. Even though you have every right to be sad or angry at the way things are, it's nonetheless the way things are. And it's our call to respond. Let's make conscious and intentional decisions every day to be thankful. And while we're on that topic, I'd like to thank our principals, vice principals, and every teacher along the road. For you have devoted yourselves to giving us opportunities to succeed. Even though what you do day in and day out, we might not see it now, we are forever indebted to you and we are truly grateful for you. Support staff, office staff, custodians, you pour effort into this school and into this administration every day. What you do, it's taken for granted as well. We want you to know that the gift of not worrying is one of the main factors why we focus, learn, and grow throughout these four years at the school. We want to thank you. Parents, grandparents, friends, family, loved ones, your sacrifices that put us ahead of yourself, it means the world to us. You have modeled life and subconsciously changed each and every one of us into who we are today. We're forever indebted to you. Thank you. Graduating class of 2020, my friends, I'm truly happy that I've taken this step in life with you. And even though through this recording process, I'm pretty sure I'll become a meme, I'll take that hit for you guys. It's totally worth it. I'm so excited to see what you're all going to achieve in these upcoming years and accomplish. Just before this ends, I wanna leave you with a question and it's up to you, it's up to, you to decide what you wanna do with it. In times, of life that go wrong, when you're confused, when you're in moments of uncertainty, when you're anxious, when adverse circumstances hit you, 
how will you respond? Thank you, class of 2020. As the ceremony draws to a close, I'd like to take a moment to thank those who have helped make this event incredibly memorable. To Mayor Stewart, Trustee Hobson, and Superintendent Gartland, thank you very much for sharing this evening with us. Your support, your time, and commitment to our school is very much appreciated. To my colleagues in the administration team, Mr. Chafito, Ms. Farnell, and Mr. King, as well as our counselors, Ms. Norlin, Ms. Temland, and Ms. Thomas, and our teaching staff and support staff, thank you for the time, energy, and dedication you have put into helping everyone throughout their time at Centennial. A final recognition and appreciation to all of our school staff who helped this evening, as well as our support staff and office staff, who have worked not only to make the last week possible, but who have supported our graduates in their learning these past four years. We also wanna thank our PAC parents for the presentation of the pens to our graduates. Graduates, please help me in thanking your parents, grandparents, friends, and family who have helped you to get to this place today and everything that being here signifies and represents. On behalf of all the staff at Centennial, we wish our graduates nothing but success for their future. Piper Alexander Jansen will now pipe us out. I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside my head saying you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My faith is shaken, but I, I gotta keep trying. Gotta keep my head held high There's always gonna be another mountain I'm always gonna wanna make it move Always gonna be an uphill battle Sometimes I'm gonna have to lose It ain't about how fast I get there Ain't about what's waiting on the other side The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, sometimes I knock me down, but no, I'm not breaking. I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm gonna remember most, yeah. Just gotta keep going.
Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road Time grabs you by the rest, directs you where to go So make the best of this test and don't ask why It's not a question but a lesson learned in time It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life Take the photographs and still frames in your mind 
Hanging on a shelf in good health and good time Tattoos and memories and dead skin on trial For what it's worth, it was worth all the while It's something unpredictable, but in the end is right I hope you had the time of your life But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life It's something unpredictable But in the end it's right I hope you had the time of your life